What's up, everybody? It's Danny from the LasserCast here with my wife, Athena. And we are going to be reviewing episode two of The Stand on CBS All Access. We reviewed episode one with Pete and uh, his wife, Sherry, last week. And we liked it more than they did. And we were both kind of shocked at how much we really enjoyed the first episode. So does that carry over to episode two? Uh, what did you think? Well, uh, let me just preface this. We're going to start with a little bit of review, and then we'll get to the spoilers um, in the latter half. Uh, this episode was called... Pocket Savior. Pocket Savior, which was also the name of the album that Larry Underwood um, had uh, apparently was about to release. Um, at the, I'm not going to say hi to the pandemic because that would mean everybody's dead, but just like right when everybody's at the place where America is now, you know, <laughs> uh, people are catching it. We're wearing masks. A lot of people are going to the hospital. Yeah. That, that's where we, uh, uh, that's where that, that comes from. Um, so this, uh, episode two is framed around two pivotal characters, one is Larry Underwood, and the other is Lloyd uh, Henry. Henry. Um, I I mean, at first we we didn't like Lo- Lloyd. We thought, you know, we're comparing him to. Uh, yeah, I I and I brought this up in our episode one review. I watched the Stand miniseries when I was twelve years old, and I only read the book this year uh, during the pandemic. Uh, so for 26 years, I've had Miguel Ferrer as Lloyd Henry in my head. Uh, and the book describes him as, well, you just were actually rereading it and said yeah. that he's described as more of like as a, a baby face. Yeah, he's a baby face killer. Um, the scene with uh, Poke being pokerized, you know, on how he ends up in jail is similar throughout the both both miniseries and the book. Yeah, similar enough for us to know like that's that that's yeah. how he got there. Yeah, the actor who plays Lloyd in this, Nat Wolf, uh, is fine. Um, he doesn't really do anything to really stand out to me. Yeah, and yeah, um, but yeah, we'll we'll get back to Lloyd. The, the The main character of this episode is Larry, Larry Underwood. He's one of the main characters of the book. Uh, and Larry is a drug addict who is a musician, of course, and he, you know, is kind of riding out his fame uh, in the book. He's blown all of his money on drugs, and the pandemic hits, and he ends up in New York where he takes up with uh, in the, in this series, a very beautiful, uh, stranger named Rita Blakemore, played by Heather Graham, who, if you're my age, will always be Roller Girl. Uh, I, by the way, we looked it up. She's 50 years old. And Rita Blakemore is 50. I could not believe, uh, she looks maybe five years older than she did in Boogie Nights. And yeah, it, she's 50. So that's kind of crazy to me. Uh, uh, what I will say about the character of Rita, one, I'm glad she's in it because I did I disliked the 94 miniseries skipping over her completely and using Nadine. Um, Who does show up in this episode, by the yes, way. Yes, to replace her completely. Um, and uh, But uh, I, I really expected Rita to be more neurotic and not like this Rita. Heather Grimes' Rita is, is a little, has some wisdom and although you know we're not sure we think she's going to end up the same way as rita because it does not show that fully in this episode I, yeah um um but i there there i think my biggest issue with this episode was uh some of the casting decisions and just some of the things that the, the characters do uh i think it's obvious from my tone that i didn't like this episode even a little bit compared to the first episode i didn't hate it I just thought it was very slow. You know, part of uh, CBS All Access is you're watching the commercials. So a 55-minute show 
is a 55 minute show and it this felt like you were watching a movie and I kind of was like can we get to the end already can we get to it? whereas the first episode I shockingly blew me away we watched it twice and we really enjoyed it both times uh Pete said something in his review uh, of the first episode when we did it together that really struck me as we were watching this episode and you mentioned this before when you were rewatching it about the the kind of pattern that the show seems to follow Pete compared it to Lost and that really hit home in this episode where you're going to meet the characters on the island uh, which here is during Captain Trips the pandemic and then actually in Colorado. Well, in Colorado, and then you're going to get the lost moment where you zoom back to who this person was in the before time, and you're going to get a story about them. And I feel like you're going to get an, you're going to get episodes like this, at least another one or two of them, so that we introduce all the characters. And then once all the characters are introduced. I really hope they stop doing that and focus on what's going on because it's going to get, if it already hasn't, gotten really repetitive. Um, I have an unpopular opinion. Go ahead. Uh, I mean, although she wasn't in the episode a lot, Amber Heard as Nadine Cross, um, kind of like her better than Laura San Giacomo. Oh, is that how I pronounce it? Laura San Giacomo. Yeah. Um, and... You know, they did the whole thing with her and Joe together. So that was good instead of Joe with, you know, Larry's girlfriend. Um, she is kind of a, I, I want to almost say kind of like Franny. Just like, you know, laid back, a little hoarse voice, you know, not sure of her place. Because she's in Colorado right now. But she kind of knows what her destiny is. Laura San Giacomo in the miniseries just was just over the top and just like, oh, everybody. So <laughs> I was I, the whole time, I, I kind of which feel, annoyed me. I, I feel like that was part of like uh, maybe a 90s, you know, TV miniseries compared to now. I, I don't know. I didn't like the fact that Amber Heard felt too normal in this she does seem very and normal. and nadine in the book was never normal like even when she was pretending to be normal she was never normal and you always felt that with laura san giacomo i also had a really big crush on her when i was 12 years old so i like her better than amber heard i'm uh, sort of <laughs> wondering like the thing that i did like about the miniseries is how like nadine went from like dark hair to white hair as soon as she was with randall flick and Amber Heard has such platinum blonde hair. I don't. I, I really yeah. want them to do that. So I don't know how that. So I guess warning now because what it was one episode. We're gonna jump into some spoilers about what happens in episode two. Uh, if you don't want to know, uh, come back and watch after you've seen it on CBS All Access. Uh, but Larry uh, and Rita are basically trying to escape New York. Uh, Larry is played by Jovan Adepo, uh, and I didn't know this actor. Uh, a major, there were a few major changes in uh, this episode, well, for, the, for this uh, series, that are brought to light in this episode. First off is Larry is African American in this series, uh, which is not a big deal necessarily, except in the book, uh, they do kind of, Stephen King does kind of make like, uh, some jabs about how Larry being a white singer kind of he uses the phrase he made a black song in Baby Can You Dig Your Man and people are like oh I thought you were black yeah and like in the book whenever Larry meets somebody they're like you're Larry Underwood from Baby Can You Dig Your Man I thought you were black and it's like this running joke throughout the book so to make him African American obviously takes that that joke out of the book. Also, one thing that drove me nuts in this episode, she didn't really, I don't think you got annoyed with this at all, but Larry's a musician, the character. Uh, yeah. Okay. And they made, it was almost overwhelmingly obvious that they hired an actor who can't play music. 
Now, I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe he can, and, maybe he can and maybe there's going to be this great scene later in the series where he picks up the guitar and starts rocking away. But every time Giovanna Depo picked up his guitar, his fingers would go near the strings and then something would happen. He'd get interrupted. He'd get distracted. He'd have to turn and run. And I just felt like it was very obvious that they were doing these things because he couldn't actually play. And that bothered me. Like, okay, I don't care you make him black. Who cares? Whatever. You could find an actor to play the guitar. You have a character who the guitar is such an integral part of his character. I wanted to hear Larry Underwood play music. Uh, I love the Larry in the book. He's one of my probably two or three favorite characters. Uh, and my favorite character in the book is Harold. I thought Owen Teague did an amazing job in episode one. He was our, our favorite part of that episode. He wasn't really in episode two a lot, but it was very effective. My favorite scene of this episode is when Larry goes yes. to Harold's house to thank him for all those signs. And you see that like Harold is genuinely moved and pleased that like someone thought so highly of him and like, you know, was like, wow, that was a really good idea. Thanks. You like say what would Harold do? So that was like a really like great part of of the episode. And the thing that links those two characters, and we brought this up in our episode one review, is both of those characters to me could have gone either way. If if one th and this is in the book, if one thing would have broken right for Harold, he might have stayed on the good path with Mother Abigail. If something would have gone wrong for Larry, I mean stuff does go wrong wrong for Larry, but he could have gone to the dark side. In this, uh, I just didn't feel like there was ever a pull for him to do anything other than Be like good. Yeah, I mean, like, he was a little bit of an asshole in the beginning, but because but it was really like when he was yeah, and he wasn't drugs. Yeah, and he, he didn't even play being a drug addict. Uh, he wasn't strung out enough. I don't know. I, I had a lot of problems with his character, uh, I, with his, the way he was acted and, and just the, the way that he was written. I, I didn't, I don't know. I, I didn't like that. And uh, one change that the series does uh, that's a, a huge change from both the book and the miniseries is in the book and in the 1994 miniseries, Larry escapes New York through the Lincoln Tunnel. And it's this harrowing scene in the dark surrounded by cars filled with dead bodies dead from the from the disease from captain trips and here they forego that and him and rita escape to the sewers and they they go through and then he ends up alone in the sewer and that is probably the best part of this episode uh it's actually a pretty scary and gross scene uh that it, you know we were both like, wow, I can't believe they're making this choice to do this instead of the tunnel. But I never really thought going through the tunnel made sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and, and that does, since we're talking spoilers, that does lead to the best single shot of this episode where they come out of the sewer and they're in front of the George Washington Bridge, which was their plan was to get to the George Washington Bridge. And the camera pans from the George Washington Bridge Packed with cars. Packed with cars, cars that are smoking and, 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 you know, presumably filled with dead bodies. And the camera just does this long pan. Uh, and you get to see the whole New York skyline and buildings on fire. And, and it really is a great shot. Uh, at the end of, I don't know, what I thought was kind of a subpar episode. Like, you know, you brought up Heather Graham. I, like, I love Heather Graham. I just didn't think, I don't know. You're rereading the book again. And yeah, and I'm trying to, like, they made it match. They made Heather Graham match the Rita Blakemore in the book. However, okay. I read the book when I before I saw anything, and I always pictured Rita looking older. I said, uh, I, my husband does not remember who this is, but I always pictured, like, Lana from Three's Company, and she was this older looking, sexy lady that would always try to like seduce Jack and he would try to run away from her. So, if anyone yeah. remembers that <laughs> reference, that's who I think of and when I thought of when I thought Rita Blakemore. And I didn't remember from the book 
exactly how old she was. I but the way she was described and the way she was always depicted as being so needy of, of Larry, I kind of got the, I always envisioned her being older than 50. You know, I mean, we, we were joking around when, when, we, when I told her Heather Graham was 50, she's like, yeah, well, JLo's 50. And uh, there was like a, another actress who like, these are like gorgeous women who are 50. Like being 50 doesn't mean- Looking old. D doesn't mean looking old. Like 25 years ago, if you said so, like somebody was 50, you'd be like, oh, they're, they're like grandma. Now, they're, like, there's gorgeous women out there who, who look, who are 50, you know, and so I picture... I'm almost one of them. Almost. <laughs> and you're beautiful. But I, I pictured Rita, even while I was reading the book, I pictured her as this, like, almost 60-year-old grandmother-esque cougar who was trying to cling to Larry because that's all she had. She knew she was going to die if Larry didn't kind of rescue her. And Larry in the book begrudgingly took her with him. And I didn't have that feeling at all. There's like, there's no. even this, there's she's even this. She's stronger in this series. There's even this, there's this prolonged sex scene between them that I think was only done because it was Heather Graham and she still looks great. And it was like, nobody's going to look at these two as a couple and think, wow, he's with a much older woman or she's, you know, doing this because she feels that the only way she can keep him around is if she sleeps with him. Where that was exactly what I felt in the book. Like mm -hmm. if somebody would have seen them. They yeah, I mean, in the book, it described her, her, her sex as like desperate. And like he did have moments of disgust when he saw like a yeah. piece of old in the body. Yeah, it, you're not exactly. It, I, I don't know. There were, there's also scenes when, um, when they do get to the boulder free zone that you, you, you meet Nick but it's like a fleeting, like he just crosses paths and uh, the actor there, Henry Zaga, you, you don't, I'll be, Nick, if you don't know, is a uh, mute, he's uh, deaf, deaf, mute. deaf mute. So to say you don't hear from him, well, that would be stupid, but he, he literally just walks past the camera. We also meet Ray Brentner. Uh, Ray was in the book Ralph Brentner and in the 1994 miniseries, now they've gender swapped that, ca that character. Again, it doesn't really matter to me. It's 25 years later from the miniseries. And Ralph, we were saying before, Ralph was always, I guess, the least important of the main kind of good guy characters. So to make that one character a woman, I think is kind of, that, that might later on when we find out hopefully more about Ray. I think that'll be interesting. Yeah, and if they, they do the crucifixion scene at the end, oh, well, it'll be more touching. Mm -hmm. you know, if yeah. Um, I, I, I think this episode overall, um, if, if we're giving it a rating, I mean, out of a five, I'd probably give this one about... I, I would give the first episode probably a four and a half, close to a five. Uh, I loved it. We both loved it. This episode would be more like a two and a half, but like trending down because i no I, I think i'm a three i so not and not trending down yeah I'm so forgiving yeah i i mean i gotta be honest one of the things that she doesn't like about me <laughs> is that i tend to give up on shows the second i lose interest like i walked away from the walking dead in season two i remember the episode it was the one herschel died in that's not a spoiler it's been on for a decade uh, the episode Herschel died in, I like, I was like, yeah, I think I'm done with this show. And I've never watched it since. Um, Lost, I, I quit on Lost and I only got back on Lost because it was a condition of getting together with her. She like basically was like, if you want to be with me, you have to watch Lost. We didn't talk about this last day. Oh, well, <laughs> I think it might've been edited it out, but it, let me talk. I, uh, one other thing is there's a pivotal <laughs> conversation between Randall Flagg and Lloyd Henry. Um, he, uh, Alexander Skarsgård is in it more. He's having that conversation with Lloyd. It is, Lloyd is very, very pathetic and he, he does it well. And, um, 
Randall is nice and comforting to him, but scary at the same time. So um, that that uh, that scene works. Um, I mean, really, it all boils down to is that we had the little Larry story introduced, and we had the Lloyd story introduced. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. Like Stu and the others aren't they in just, it. They they they're there, but like they're only there when they show Very up to minute. the. Yeah. Um, we still have yet to meet Trash Can Man. Mm. Um, uh, who else do we still have to meet? Well, I mean, I, I hope we get a, a backstory on Ray. We've barely met Mother Abigail. Uh, uh, Nadine's whole deal. We we don't really know much about Nadine yet. Uh, and it's and, Tom, and, and where's Tom Cullen? Oh, of course. Yeah, we haven't met, and, and we don't know anything about Nick. Like yeah. we did, we don't know how Nick and and. Uh, so I wonder if it it says like what the. Uh, let's, so it, yeah, let's see who who's the uh, the main blank pages. It does not say. It doesn't have. It doesn't say who. It, well, here Tom Cullen and Julie Laurie are in the cast for the next episode. And blank pages could be Nick. Yeah. Writing out his his words. Yeah, I mean, we're just guessing. Yeah, I. I <laughs> My my point before was if I wasn't reviewing this show, another episode or two like this one, and I might ditch out, uh, just because. But I mean, I love the source material so much. Uh, Julie Laurie's played by Cat Catherine McNamara, who played Arrow's daughter in the oh, really? last season of Arrow. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that was episode two. Um, overall, not as good as the first one. Uh, I hope they kind of break from the formula, and I hope that they uh, give us more scares and excitement in the next episode, but we'll see. Uh, any last words on this one? No, no. I, I, it has to get better. Yes. I, well, <laughs> it will. Well, I mean, I've read a lot of negativity towards the, the show from people who've reviewed, from people who've watched five or more episodes, so... This episode, I was I was very optimistic after the first episode, and now I'm really pessimistic after this episode because I'm thinking, if if all of those people were giving it negative reviews, this is probably the start of why. But we'll see, we'll see. It's only nine or ten episodes, so. All right, we will. Next episode is on uh, the thirty first, I think, which is New Year's Eve. So, hope you guys had a happy holidays and. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year from the Lassercast, and we'll see you soon.